Hello and welcome to today's video in which we are going to look at um, uh, compact blocks for our communication. Uh, in my opinion, this is the best way of communicating between PLCs and also from a PLC to any other device, basically. Um, yeah, that's in existence. Just my personal opinion and it's broadly used. Um, and I also recommend uh, doing it the way I do it. Uh, or very similar, there's of course some other ways of using those blocks, but um, you can do it my way <laughs> or you can look up, always clicking on a block F1 or Googling it um, and seeing, looking at other applications. This is just one way that I'm showing, right? Don't forget that the easiest and probably also one of the best. <clears throat> Therefore, we have in the previous videos, we have looked at TCON to establish a connection, T disconnect to disconnect a, a, con a connection, and a T send, um, a send block to send data. And on the other PLC here, uh, a receive block, T receive to receive the data. Of course, the other side also has the co a connection establishment and connection disconnection block. All those blocks I want to replace. Right, so I'm deleting all the stuff that we've made earlier because there's two blocks, uh, compact blocks that do all this. Right, we, we need one block, compact block on the PLC that you want to send data from, and one on the other side um, where you want to receive the data. So both programs are empty right now. I will also delete the system blocks here because I won't need those. The data blocks that have been there for the instancing. So I just have an empty program. The only stuff that I have. Oops. The only stuff that I have is my data block that I want to receive the data into and my data block that I want to send, right? <clears throat> Make sure that those have the same layout. You see, I have one Boolean, one int, one real, one word value that I want to send and I have the same uh, structure on the other PLC. If I make, if I want to add more, we can always add more, but then make sure that you do that on both sides. Uh, in other words, what, whatsoever, right? And I also want to do that on the other side. You can add many, many more. I think 80,000 or so is the limit. And they don't even need to have the same name. I always keep it like that because it's just easier for me to remember. Um, whatever's in there. <clears throat> Good. I want to send this database block and push it, uh, put it into the receive data block. Therefore, we need on the PLC one, uh, just the information here, those two blocks that I want to send, right click and properties, those have optimized block access deactivated. There are some ways, other ways, not the one I'm doing, where you can have it active, but I recommend here actually deactivating the blo optimized block access because it's easier to use because every data has a given structure and an amount of bit that we're actually losing some memory, some space, but we're getting more stabi not stability, but more structure. So optimized block access is in both cases deactivated. <clears throat> so uh, if you want to learn more about optimized block access, check out my channel. <laughs> Some advertisement here, sorry for that. So on my first PLC that I want to send data from, I can send data and you find the block that I'm talking about, the T send underscore C in communication and there's open user communication and you have T send underscore C. C stands for compact block. So those are compact blocks that have a connection establishment, a disconnecting uh, and the send integrated, right? So I can just put it in here, here in my program. I will need to make a database because it's an instance of a, of a function block. And there we have it. We don't need to put much on here actually. We need data that I want to send. That's for sure. You could put a bit here, you could put a byte, you could put a word, you could put one integer value, you could put anything that you want basically. I have this database, uh, the data block that I want to send. I just push it there, right? I just dragged and dropped it here onto data and there it is. This is what's being sent. The next is the rec, the request. Um, could be anything, could be anything. I have an internal memory for test here. I think I call it M01 is my, no. What was it? Send data. I think I call it send data. Yeah, just some internal memory. You could have a clock bit. You could have a push button. You could have anything there actually. On a rising edge of this send data, this data is being sent to the partner PLC. The last thing that we need to tell this block, 
who is the partner PLC. And this we can do here on this little uh, toolbox here on the top. You see it, the toolbox, you click on the toolbox, down in our window here, on our configuration window, there is the configuration for this block. Let me push myself back into the corner here where I belong. <clears throat> and there we have connection, right? We need to establish the connection. We need to tell this block, hey, where do you send the data to? We could now in partner choose the PLC that we have in our project. The other PLC, we could make broadcast, multicast. I've explained that in previous videos, uh, in the TCON video, if you want to need, know more about those. Uh, not too much in detail, but uh, we don't need those right now. I want them unspecified, which could be anything. It could be a PC, a PLC, anything that has an IP address, right? That uses the IP protocol or the internet protocol. What we need to do here is now, again, we need to create a connection database where all this data that you see here is stored new. <clears throat> then after we have created one, we could choose now a connection type, a configuration mode. I always leave it as it is, right? That's the best. The only thing that we need to remember here is the connection ID. If you want to send data to more devices, you will have more of those blocks and each block should have an individual connection ID. Right, so you can also say, hey, this is the connection and so. <clears throat> Next thing we need is, of course, in the address, we need to put in the partner IP address and I have given my PLC the 192.168.0.102. This is the second PLC here. So my first PLC with this number sends data to this partner, which could be anything. It does not have to be a PLC, it could be anything actually. Next thing, if I scroll down a little bit, we have this active connection establishment. I also talked about this in the TCON video. So check it out if you don't uh, really know it. And also about ports I've talked. This we leave as it is. We just need to remember PLC1 is our active connection establishment device, right? There we go, done. And after we've done this, the block parameters here will also turn green. Done, this block is configured. That's it, right? <laughs> I've explained now for five minutes, but actually it, the configuration here took like, what, 10 seconds if we just do it, done. I can already download this to my PLC. Download, yeah, it's consistent. I have probably not made any mistakes here. Very good. <clears throat> and download, finish. Here we go, right? If I go online, I will see, hey, uh, this is online and it is running. It's got some type of error here, right? It's trying to make a connection, but it cannot, well, it cannot find the partner, right? So we still need the partner device. If I go to device and I haven't tested that. If I go here to connections, actually I should see, yeah, I should see here programmed open user communication is red because the, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's not there, right? Um, because TCON is trying to connect sometimes. If it doesn't find something, it will wait, doesn't connect, then it will try to connect again. So it's trying, you can see that here. You can also see here it's doing something, but it, it always sends out an error. If you need to know the error code, click on it, hit F1 and there's an error code you can look at. Could be interesting right now. So I'm hitting F1 here as well, opening my information system. Here we have information to it, blah, 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 blah. If you scroll down, there's the error code list. Um, which was the error? The one 80C5. 80C5, connection terminated by communication partner, remote connection partner is not released, right? We don't get an okay from the partner. Make a guess, the partner needs also a block, right? Here we go, got that. Now for the next, the second PLC here, we don't want the T sent, make a guess. One PLC sends, the other one receives. We need here in the other program, we need open user communication. Right there, open user communication, the T receive, right? I put it in here. It needs an instance data block, I hit okay. And look at this, it looks very similar. Hey, it needs an enable. When do you really want to have the connection? It needs this connect and it needs data. Make a guess, data is where are we going to receive the data into? I take receive here, I push it there. Connect, make a guess. You have the start configuration here. Click on start configuration. You have connection parameters. And now we just need to turn it around what we just did, right? We have this PLC. What's the, the second PLC? What's the communication partner? It's unspecified. 
I cannot select the other PLC right now because I'm online. If I go offline, I can also select the other PLC, but I prefer actually not selecting it uh, and doing it manually here. Connection data, let's create a, whoops. I wanted to take my face and put it, put it back here. Um, a new data block, right? Uh, my partner PLC is the first PLC, which I gave the ID 192.168.0.101. Here we go. And now important, the active connection establishment. We have said that PLC1 is the active partner. So here we go. Right. Here we go, active partner. And you see, always the not active partner needs the local port. I've explained that in a previous video, in the TCON video. So check that out if you want to know more about it. What we can see, block parameters, now it's green. The last thing that's missing on here is this en underscore r. Your PLC does not always want to receive. You can tell your program, you can tell your PLC when it should receive. It could be a switch that you allow the reception of data. It could be like you could put password protection on there or something like this. Uh, in my case, I want none of that. I just want this to be true that we can always receive data, right? If this is true, I can always receive data. Cont, you see cont showed up here. Cont is also true by default. Cont means if you have a connection once, keep it up. Don't disconnect and reconnect for the next time. Just keep it up because more data is coming in. That's the cont. There's more, like you see, if you click down here, like a length, you don't need to configure the length. Like if you do it like I did, we don't need to configure the length because it is in this data. The program knows how much data it needs to receive and how much is sent, so we don't need to configure it. If you do it in other ways, there's ad hoc, for example, uh, you would need to make the length, but we're concentrating on the simple stuff here. So not needed. I can download my second PLC here. Receive block is done. Also here, the configuration took like, what, 15 seconds, maybe, if we, if I wouldn't have explained it, right? Maybe, maybe 15 seconds, maybe even a little bit more. You see, this block is now green. Cont is true. It says 7006. What does that actually mean? Or 7006 in hexadecimal. 7006 probably means receiving data or something. I don't know, actually. 7006, data is currently being received. That sounds good, right? Uh, that sounds very good. Let's see in our first. So this is the second PLC. I will take it and I will push it to the side here a little bit. We don't need it anymore. Everything's green. That's good, right? That's very good. First PLC, let's see, now that the connection is there, you see it's not changing this value anymore. It says 7004. So let's check it out. What does 7004 or 7004 hex mean? 7004 hex, uh, 7004 hex communication connection has been established and is being monitored. No send job execution is active. Make a guess. No send job execution. We are only sending data on a rising edge of send data. So if I, if I now modify this to one, we will send data. Let's see. So this is the data I want to send. Those are the current values. You don't need to remember them just so that you see them, right? True for 123.8 and so on. So those are the values I want to send, right? That you've seen them. If you want to remember, if you want to check, th those are the values. On the other PLC right now, on my PLC2, it's all false, it's all zero, it's all nothing, right? Because nothing has been sent yet. So let's see. If I have my send data block here, I can right click, modify, modify to one. As I said, you could have a, like a clock frequency here, right? Or maybe a push button, anything. You could put any anything there. And now modify to one. Bop. You see, true for 130. I still have the other database here. So this has been taken from PLC1, sent to PLC2, and you see those values are now exactly the same as those. So send job was good. What you couldn't see is that this value very shortly for like, one cycle it changed not even a cycle this block is asynchronous actually so it's not really looking at the cycle times so it's asynchronic doesn't matter what that is i just throw it in there for those that were interested <laughs> yeah this is done and you see those values are still the same no job processing active but active connection and this one here says hey not receiving data because nothing is sent but we have a connection so this here is the easiest way for me to send data from one plc to another 
if I would have a third PLC or if I also want to send data now from the second PLC, so from here to the first PLC, make a guess what I do. I just in my second PLC, I take a T send block, Bob, I configure it right with all the stuff that I want. In my other PLC here, I would put the T receive block, I configure it as I want and done. If I want to connect to a third PLC, make a guess. If the first PLC wants to send to the third PLC, a T send block in the first PLC. Here we go, put the data there and put the connect data and so on. Done. Just copy, paste and repeat. The only thing when you copy and paste, make sure that those databases are unique. Don't have database one here and also database one here. This won't work, of course. But that's instantiation. That's a different video. Um, which you could check out on my channel about data blocks. I think no functions and functions blocks and how to use them, how to reuse them. Um, yeah, here we go. T send, T receive, uh, compact blocks, very useful, very, very useful blocks when it comes to communication. This stuff here, that's all you need for communicating between two PLCs, right? If uh, you still have any questions, just put a comment down below. Um, if this is of any help for you or if you thought it was interesting, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. By the way, if you're wondering where my chair is, I, I, I got a table now that can do this. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye.